Sure, there was a bed right there. He's not a big one, but ah, on the Tokyo rig, the Tokyo rig's a pretty cool little bait for fishing around spawning fish, especially. You know, it, especially well with elastic, any plastic that floats, it keeps your bait up off the bottom. Uh, you know, before this was popular, we used to always throw a really short drop shot, like a three-inch leader, and pitch it around in these areas. But the drop shot, the problem with that was it'd get tangled. That way it would spin around, it'd be wrapped around there 40 times. Now this here is going to hit the bottom, and this being a last tech, it's standing up off the bottom as you're sitting there shaking it, whereas obviously I think salt is going to be down more. But still, keeping that bait just a little ways off the bottom, these fish that are spawning you can't see, a really, really deadly technique. You know, that Tokyo ring, it seems like I find more and more uses for it. I know I throw a swim bait on it a lot, when you're trying to keep a swim bait down, it keeps it down really well. We can have a weedless swim bait. If there's wood, brush, stuff like that, it, uh, it, it's just weedless and stays on the bottom. You don't need as much weight to keep it down. Uh, it makes it fall really fast because it's so weight forward too. So whatever weight you put on there is probably less than you really think it's gonna need to be. And there's a lot, of, a lot of ways to fish it for sure. And I gotta say, I'm still learning. I, uh, I know in this situation, those things that came out, I thought, boy, that's gonna be, absolutely deadly on fish that are trying to spawn. I'm sure even if you're fishing slow in areas that have a lot of sediment in the bottom, just keep the bait up a little bit, but it seems to be a lot more effective with a bait that floats on there. I'm throwing a little creature bait here, the Gremlin uh, by Z-Man. It's a, a new bait that any of these little creature baits when fish are spawning, you know, my two choices for spawning fish, throw in there is a straight tail something or other, or something that has a lot of action to it like this here. It's fairly subtle in the legs. They don't kick real violently, but there's a lot of little wigglies. That's kind of like why the lizard's always been good around fish that are spawning. They like all those little wigglies, but there are definitely times something straight works too. And I'll use a straight tail worm or stick worm um, around them also. But those are really the two things I throw for fish that are spawning that I can't see. You know, we're not 100% sure these fish are spawning, but being around arrowheads this time of year, there's probably a 95% chance they're up there spawning or thinking about spawning. <laughs> there are apparently a lot of little males up here on beds. The thing that probably be to do is be to catch these, come back in about a half hour and go through and pitch all these same edges. A lot of times you'll catch these little males and they'll be a lot less aggressive. As you're pitching through there, you'll end up catching the females that were with them, if there are females with them. We can't see the bottom in here. You know, my assumption is just where they are. They're all on beds, but I, uh, I you don't know if there's a female or not. I know there's gonna be at some point, it just may not be today. But if there is, a lot of times you go through these areas, jack all these, let them go, come back a little while later, and you're kind of amazed the same pitch you made before and caught a 13 incher you catch a six pounder or four pounder or whatever. It's obviously the female that was hanging around that male. But the Tokyo rig is seeming quite good for the spawning fish. I, you know, we fished out here today throwing several different Texas rigs and the number of bites we've had on this versus the, what we had on that for the amount of time definitely seems better. <laughs> That was pretty cool. He couldn't handle it. Fell down in there. Just sit still and my line is too. Got him. A little sore on the bottom of his tail, but not really like a fan and sore. Well, we're throwing a green pumpkin today. Uh, you know, these natural tones, generally when I'm fishing, most of the places really end up throwing uh, some sort of natural tone, whether it's green pumpkin or I like California cross, those browns and greens. Uh, you know, the exception is really dirty water. I end up using June bug or black and blue. But any time that they're up this shallow and the water is not super dirty, it seems like it's pretty hard to beat a green pumpkin, watermelon red, something along those lines. The gremlin is a little bit thicker bait, so it's just got more bulk to it. It displaces a little more water for one, but it's got a lot more weight. Uh, when you're casting it, you know, some of these little creature baits like this, there's not a lot of bulk to them and they make it kind of hard to cast. So I can get away throwing a fairly lightweight and uh, 
you know, have a bit, little bit more body weight to the bait, so it actually makes it a little bit easier to throw further and throw it on heavier line too. Some of those light, small baits get pretty tough to throw on 17 or 20 pound line when there's not a lot of weight there. The line just doesn't come off your reel as well, through your guides as good, all that kind of stuff. But this little dude right here, you can sling out there, you know, you'll be able to skip it, do a lot of things with it. We got a uh, 3 16 ounce weight on our Tokyo rig here. And it, it lets you get away with a little bit more weight with the Tokyo rig, in my opinion, just because it doesn't crash into the bottom as fast as a, a Texas rig would. It's going to stop above the bottom. So that bait stays up there a little bit longer. And it also, of course, like we talked about before, sits above the bed. Those fish seem to react to that a lot better. 